Hi everyone, this is Utkarsh. Um, it's, a rather, it's a rather dreary day over here, it's raining really hard, but it doesn't matter because today is a very exciting day. Uh, today is the first day that I'm actually getting to try out my uh, new PRS594 single cut. Um, and just for fun, we're also going to compare it versus my traditional, no pun intended, Les Paul, which is of course the Les Paul traditional. So a little bit more about this guitar uh, before we get into comparing these two. Um, this is the single cut, uh, the one that just came out, I think it came out as a private stock model in November and I think it became a core PRS maybe a couple of months later. Uh, this particular one is in a limited color called Burnt Maple Leaf. Uh, personally, I love this color because I like red and this has reds checked with black so it kind of works very well. Um, this is Wood Library which means um, it has some special appointments uh, such as an ebony fretboard. Uh, ten top and flame maple, flame maple <laughs> at the back. Um, yeah, I got the, I got the wood library version as I mentioned in my previous video. Uh, I have if you check it out when I first got the guitar, it was actually a birthday surprise for me. Uh, but uh, uh, but my girlfriend knew that I always wanted surprising. She knew that I always wanted um, uh, an ebony fretboard, hence the wood library. All right. So uh, before we compare the two guitars, let me give you a few of my impressions of this. Uh, honestly, obviously, it sounds every bit as good as you know as we think it does. Um, you know, every every note rings out clearly if you strum a chord like perhaps like this. But yeah, more than that, <laughs> it's for me. Uh, I'm a. Uh, for those of you who have watched some of my videos, you'll know that I am a Les Paul player. I've been playing a uh, Les Paul as far as long as I've been playing guitar, starting off with Epiphone and uh, a Gibson for the last couple of years or so. So this is very confusing because I have a PRS, I have a Custom 22 and that feels different. It does not feel like a Les Paul. Um, this one, when you sit down with it, with its, you know, with its single cut shape and everything, you feel like, oh, <laughs> it's, I'm playing my Les Paul. And even the neck, the, uh, the pattern vintage one feels nice and chunky, not as chunky as my uh, as my Les Paul um, traditional, which has the thick 50s neck, but chunky enough, uh, chunkier than any other guitar I would say I have. Um, but yeah, this just feels like a Les Paul, and I'm like, oh, it's a Les Paul, but but wait, that that headstock doesn't look right. And of course, the you get a sense it's, it's kind of confusing for me. It feels like a Les Paul, and I guess that is the intent. That the intent is to probably take the concept that is the Les Paul single cut guitar and and marry it with you know the kind of quality and the kind of playability that only a PRS can offer and to that extent it succeeds. So uh, already if I start comparing these two and I'm just going to pick up my Les Paul as well maybe I'll just mute my yeah there we go. All right so comparing these two guitars this one's much heavier this I think is about 10 pounds which is quite heavy even for a Les Paul. Now, this one is a bit funny people look for light get, uh, pieces I picked out a heavy one um, or rather should I say, not me, uh, my girlfriend picked out a heavy one because she knows I like heavy guitars and this one was 9.1 or 9.2 uh, pounds. So it's quite funny uh, to get such a heavy PRS. Um, they look fairly identical in terms of, uh, you know, in terms of the, how the bridge looks. Um, this, the brass inserts on the bridge looks really nice on this. Um, Tones and knobs are very similar. The PRS knobs always feel very, very light to me. Uh, almost to an extent, I used to think, oh my God, that feels like it's going to just come off. But um, but I believe, now that I have two PRSs, I believe that's how they are on purpose. And I guess those are called speed knobs or something. Um, what else? So this one, as you know, has a shorter scale length versus this one. This has 24.594. This is 24.75. Um, I usually play my guitars with um, with uh, with nines, not and this one, the 594 comes with tens. So I would say, in terms of ease of bending, surprisingly, uh, because this has tens, I would say it's, I would say it's about the same, if not surprisingly, slightly, slightly, slightly harder to bend versus a Les Paul with nines. But then, if I put nines on this, it'll be easier, um, and it all comes down to personal preference anyway. Um, what else? Um, Otherwise, surprising how similar these two look from the back. So let me just kind of turn this around. This, of course, has a cherry back. This is, I think, natural. Um, in terms of quality, now when I compare these two guitars, when I just look at them visually, now the thing with Gibsons, and I have like five of them, 
they are <laughs> rough around the edges, you know, even though they are very high quality made in USA guitars. Like if you look at the binding over here, and maybe I'll do a few close ups, you will see, oh, there's a gap in the paint over here. Oh, there's a gap where they connect. On a PRS, no such thing, sir. It's absolutely, absolutely, absolutely perfect, which is a bit scary because I'm like, oh my God, if I ding it, if I do something, I'm gonna be, oh wait, is that? No, 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 that was just the light. Nope. This thing is perfectly made. So yeah, in terms of quality, the PRS definitely wins. Um, playability, uh, very easy, uh, despite the tens, which I don't prefer. Uh, the fretboard makes it much easier. I haven't played a PRS with a, uh, sorry, I haven't played a 594 with a rosewood fretboard, but judging by how good my custom 24's uh, rosewood fretboard is, I don't think there will be any, uh, I don't think there'll be any, any lack of playability if you replace this ebony fretboard with a rosewood fretboard. Um, what else about the 594? Um, yeah, I love these brass inserts on the bridge. I believe they have the string ends on brass to make it vibrate better. And yeah, overall this thing just sounds amazing. So what we'll do now is we'll play a couple of um, clips where I compare um, the, the PRS with the Les Paul uh, playing pretty much the same stuff side by side. And let's see what we think. <laughs> I don't know what you think, but uh, for me, as I, as I compare the sound of the PRS and the Les Paul, uh, I see two key differences. Number one, the PRS is definitely brighter, definitely brighter. Um, it's probably the way you would try to make a Les Paul sound to make it cut through a mix. It still sounds like a Les Paul, but there's no doubt it's brighter. The second thing for me is the PRS has a lot more sustain. And which is really saying something given that the Les Paul is the king of sustain. So on a typical, on my Les Paul, what I have to do to really get the kind of sustain I want sometimes, especially if I'm trying to do some of those, uh, what should I say, those Floyd, Floyd solos, 
I have to uh, engage my compressor, my MXR, and that gives me that just that extra sustain. With this guitar, I don't really think you need that. So I would really, would, I mean, yes, it's always good to have more sustain, but this guitar sustain is more than enough for 95% of, uh, of your situations, even if you play like really crazy prog rock. So yeah, the difference between the two is um, uh, brightness and sustain. But the most important question, uh, which really, which really will give, uh, will decide the appeal of this guitar, is does it sound like a Les Paul? And in my opinion, it does. It it does. It is a bit brighter, uh, despite having lower out low output pickups. Uh, by the way, I didn't mention it. This Les Paul the, is a 2014 uh, Les Paul, so that has 59 tribute. Uh, so there's a pretty low output. This, of course, has the uh, the 5708 low turns. So despite having low output pickups, the PRS is quite uh, quite bright, uh, but it sounds like a Les Paul, and that is very important because who does this guitar? Who's this, who's this guitar designed for? This guitar is actually designed for the Les Paul loyalist diehard, myself, um, who you know while they admire PRS, uh, who may even own a PRS guitar. Some of them don't. Maybe they've played PRS guitars. But for them, the Les Paul is always their go-to instrument because nothing can get you the tone of a Les Paul, except a Les Paul. But, and especially not a PRS, especially not a Custom 22. I might do a video at a later point in time where I compare the tone of my, uh, of my, of my Custom 22 with this 594. But um, I can tell you from owning the Custom 22 for about a year and a half, the, the neck pickup never got, gave it for me. I really like my Custom 22, it's super versatile. I can use it for anything, but if I really want that sound, <coughs> excuse me, I really want a Les Paul sound, it has to be the Les Paul. Not anymore. So now I have this, which gives me, so if I, you know, if I just give a bit of, I'm just going to use my Plimso, a bit of uh, EP boost, a bit of delay, that's all right, and just check this out. That's quintessential Les Paul right there. And of course, I, d I did Sunshine of Your Love previously. This again. Actually, that sounds better without delay. Let me just remove that. Yeah, I mean, PRSs did not sound like that previously. And sustain that I'm talking about. Yeah, I like it. Anyways, so I think just to round this off, what I'll do is I'll play, um, I'll just play something on my, on my looper, and then we can probably play out with the PRS and the Les Paul, just like a final comparison uh, with a backing track. All right. Anyways, I hope that this video was helpful. Um, surprisingly, no one else has done this direct comparison between uh, 594 single cut and the Les Paul yet. I know that uh, Lee Anderton's planning to do it with his, uh, what does he have, a 58 uh, reissue? That lemon burst guitar. I'm really waiting for that video. But in the meantime, if, you, if you're also waiting to compare uh, what a Les Paul and a 594 sound like, uh, hopefully this, this was helpful in some way. All right, till next time.
So Les Paul's turn. All right, let's see this. How this sounds. <laughs> 